It seems like there are new cameras and equipment coming out all of the time. It gets increasingly confusing and the FOMO is real. John and I have been preaching for years that the best way to try out new gear is to rent before you buy. There is only one place that we recommend when it comes to renting and that is our friends over at Lens Rentals. Lens Rentals is the premier source for renting not only camera equipment, but lenses, drones, projectors, and more. Do you have a big project coming up and you really need to wow your couple? Wanting to test out the newest camera before you drop thousands on it? You need Lens Rentals. My favorite thing is that if I love something I rent, I can keep it. They apply a portion of the rental fee to the purchase price, and within a few simple clicks, the gear is mine. So head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash lens rentals and use promo code HTFW15 at checkout for 15% off of your order. Lens Rentals, the only place we recommend renting. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John and I'm the only host of this podcast these days. I'm kidding. Nick has been out of town. I'm recording a bunch of episodes um, and just getting things rolling for our year. Nick is alive and well. He will be back soon, but today I'm flying solo again. Uh, it's a brand new week. Super pumped. I just got back from filming in New York City. Mastermind Group just started this last week. Things are going very, very well for us. Um, just a lot of really great things in the mix. Our course launch is coming up soon. There's just a lot of really good things coming. Um, but today, I had a great conversation with Peyton Frank. She is on the Harper's list of best wedding filmmakers in the world. She is doing luxury events, the top end of the market, the most expensive weddings on the planet. She is in the running for all of those. She's working with people like Jose Villa and KT Mary and all these expensive weddings, these beautiful destinations in Italy and Como and France and all these different places. And I wanted to have her on because she has gone from zero to where she's at now in six short years. She is killing it. She's a female filmmaker that is really wanting to empower other females to go for their dreams, to go for things. And we have a really good conversation just about how she stumbled upon filmmaking and how she's taken risks and grown and made connections to now being one of the most sought after wedding filmmakers in the world. So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. All right. Well, welcome Peyton Frank to the How to Film Weddings podcast. I've been wanting to get you on for quite some time. Here you are. Why don't you say hello, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and maybe a little bit about you. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited and honored to be here. Um, I've listened to this podcast, you know, on and off for many, many years. So it's really oh, cool, cool to, to be here. Um, I'm based in Austin, Texas. I mostly specialize in destination events all over, you know, wherever that takes me, um, as well as some commercial and editorial work as well. Um, and I've been doing this, I think I'm in my sixth year um, now. I love it. And, you know, six years to me, like, uh, is a, a really long time, but also not a really long time. Like, it's crazy what you can accomplish if you, um, you know, really get after it in six years. And I wanted just to kind of talk to you about your journey uh, where you were six years ago, what made you get into wedding filmmaking? And then like your story is really inspiring of where you started and where you are already. And I just wanted the how to film weddings listeners to, to hear it. So what, what kind of like the, the genesis, the beginning, like what got you into filmmaking? Were you doing it before weddings? How'd you stumble into weddings? Um, what was that like six years ago? Yeah. So I graduated from college. I went to college, um, in Fort Worth, Texas, TCU. And my, I studied art history and philosophy, started out pre-med, had a crisis when I realized I, I was miserable <laughs> doing that and didn't know what I was going to do to justify going to this expensive private university. Um, so luckily with my supportive friends and family, they just encouraged me to do something that I was passionate about. And I ended up studying art history and, and philosophy as a double major. Kind of my only plan with that was to go to graduate school and work in education or at a museum and, you know, what, make $30,000 a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not exactly justifying the education, but it was something that I was passionate about. And looking back, it's such a privilege to have had that education and study something that I love. And it's informed every aspect of my life since then. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm not working at a museum, but I, I feel like studying art and, and studying history for four years in undergrad, it informs what I do creatively mm-hmm. every single time. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for that background. Um, in college, I was in a sorority and, you know, kind of in leadership roles, planning different events. And I had driven down a street one day and I saw this cute little building and I was like, what is that? Like, what could that be? Is it a store? What is it? So I looked it up and it was a wedding planning company. I was not a girl who dreamed of her wedding. I never went to a wedding. I didn't think about weddings, none of that, but they were hiring interns. And I thought, well, I have planned little events in the sorority. I can work weddings. And um, so I, I hit it off with the planner there and started interning with her. It was a great way to work 10, 12 hours on a Saturday while you're in college. And I loved it. I loved, you know, seeing how many small businesses and artists and women that the wedding industry supports. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it just opened up my eyes to this thing that's been going on that I had no idea about. Um, I knew I didn't want to be a wedding planner long term. Looking at budgets and timelines and guest counts and logistics was not interesting to me at all. But I made so many amazing connections that still today are key in in my life personally and and is a business. So after college, I you know quit doing wedding planning. I knew that wasn't what I was going to do. From that experience, I knew I didn't want to go to graduate school from anymore, just because working in the real world and working with people was so exciting to me and doing something creative was really exciting to me. So I didn't know quite what I wanted to do. Um, I took a job, just full-time job at an experiential event marketing agent, so agency. So it was kind of adjacent to what I had been doing, but it's still, I, I just wasn't passionate about the work mm-hmm. and didn't see myself there long-term. So I I took what I called my sabbatical and and was fortunate enough to move back in with my parents. So I had no financial, you know, commitments. I wasn't worried about how I was going to pay rent every month. And I I told myself, you know, just take the next three or however many months to explore and think about what you might want to do. And if there are certain skills you need to acquire to apply for those jobs, start working on that. So I took like a graphic design certificate course that I paid for with my wedding planning money. And then I was also kind of just um, taking photos for friends. Um, I had taken a photography class my senior year of college uh, because I needed an elective credit to graduate. And I got in there and the first day I realized you needed to own a camera, which I thought, you know, oh, they'll, they'll loan us a camera, whatever. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy a camera. And then I saw a camera's like seven to nine hundred dollars. And so I was like, I think I might have to choose a different elective. That's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I, I was on student loans and and you know <laughs> it, it just was like I wasn't prepared for that, but I, I thought about it and I was like, you know what, a camera I'll have forever. Like I, I am interested in photography. Um, I'm just going to take my wedding planning money and I'm going to buy the camera and um, a 50 millimeter lens. And and so I did. And I absolutely loved that class and kept exploring that after college in my sabbatical time. And one day I was taking photos of one of my friend's calligraphy classes. And I just kind of looked down at my Canon at the time and saw the little video mode button. It was like the little ico- icon of the video. And I was like, oh my gosh, this camera takes video i just had no idea just no idea like what a video camera was like when i was a kid i would play with my parents you know camcorder like had a little kid like bright blue kid camera that i would make videos with but um i just didn't know what video cameras looked like um So I, in that moment, I just started taking videos. I didn't know anything about editing. I didn't know what frame rate to be. (laughs) Like I knew absolutely nothing. I was just like, this is what I'm doing. Like, and this is what I want to do. And I'm going to make a career out of this, which is, it was really, really cool. Um, And so I, you know, was editing on like iMovie and then learned that you have to license music. You can't just, (laughs) you know, pay 99 cents to download something from iTunes. and 
just slowly kept saying yes to different things and learning out of necessity. Um, and that just evolved until someone, you know, that I knew from, from my wedding planning days was like, well, when are you going to film a wedding? And I thought like, film a wedding. Like I've never even watched a wedding video. Like I knew we had wedding videographers at the weddings that I, I would be at for work, but I never watched the video. I just didn't even cross my mind. And I was like, well, I'll do it. Like, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. And so I filmed my first wedding, I think for the cost of like music licensing. And, um, I loved it. I fell in love with just being present and in, in, in the moment with the couple, which was such a difference than being on the wedding planning side of things and mm -hmm. feeling like, you know, I get to capture the, that emotion and those memories versus think about budget and timelines. I just saw weddings in a different way and, and they started to have some really, really deep, incredible meaning to me. Uh, I love all that. I could sit there and keep listening to that. Like, <laughs> It's so cool how, you know, like your art history or, you know, the art and your history and all the stuff that you're learning. Um, if you watch your films, it's very fine art and very beautiful and very, you know, and it's like, obviously, it, you know, you say that and it's like, oh, of course she has that background. That makes a lot of sense now that you say it. Um, and I love the idea too, like that you just kept taking steps and we're okay in knowing, I don't know what I'm going to do currently. I just need to take some time for me yeah. and explore and create and like yes you kind of stumbled onto it but also you were taking steps towards it the entire time mm -hmm. i think that's just really like a lot of our story you know um you know some people get in it to for the money or some people but most people kind of realize oh i could film a wedding or they get asked to do it and then they get there they do it and it's either you know i've heard people be like not for me no way mm -hmm. i'm not doing this but yeah the people that are just like oh i felt i immediately you know, I took my first wedding because I needed 500 bucks and somebody offered me $500 and I was making like 1500 a month at my job at that time. I was like, this is crazy. I'm going to be so rich. And like, uh, you know, I, I, sure, I'll take 500 bucks. And then like, I just remember like the first wedding and like the groom and the groomsmen all did a prayer beforehand and everybody was just emotional. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. And um, about six months after that first wedding, one of the, the groomsmen passed away. And they were like, do you have footage of Mike? And it was like, yeah, why? And it's like, he passed away last night. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, no way. And like being able to give that to the family and them looking me in the eyes and saying, you do not know how important this footage, this is like the last footage of him. And um, just all that wrapped up into that, like that beautiful mixture of art and humanity and like getting to be able to connect with people on such a level what a beautiful thing that we get to do. And so like, um, that's cool yeah. to hear from your perspective, just kind of how you stumbled into doing that. I guess my next, you know, question for you, you do that first wedding, you know, say for the, the cost of, uh, licensing. Um, and unfortunately, no, we can't download Coldplay songs for 99 cents and use those as the background. Like I used to do in 2007, uh, not knowing anything, but like you, you, you started taking steps to learning. Um, you had, a creative mind, but like what kind of, you do this first wedding, uh, you're learning frame rates. You like, you probably didn't have it all figured out at the beginning. So what was the no. process to, for you? Like yeah. you do this first wedding, what happens next? Yeah. I mean, I think that first wedding I had like my Canon 60, my 50 millimeter lens. I had a girlfriend who took photos and I was like, Hey, you have video mode on your camera, right? Like come shoot this wedding with me, just the ceremony. And I don't even know if I re recorded the audio. I mean, I truly did not know what went into a wedding video. Um, I just knew I loved it. And, and so after that moment, it was just like, well, what can I do to get better? What do I need to buy? And, and if I knew everything that went into shooting and editing a wedding when I first did it, there's no way I would have ever done it. I would have said, no, I can't do that. Or no, I can't buy all of that. Or, you know, no, I don't want to do that. So I, I feel really grateful that I went into it just completely not knowing anything because it, it, it allowed me to grow at my rate and, and not put that pressure on myself to do it all mm -hmm. right out, out of the gate. Um, so just after that, I was like, well, you know, I could use these different lenses or I could use a second camera angle or I can start editing audio or including audio and editing that. And how do I do that? And, um, 
you know, should I give them their full ceremony? Just different things and and was really able to just grow it and and you know, there's so much online in terms of YouTube content, of podcasts, there's, you know, courses and, and workshops and there are just so many different ways to to learn what you need. But I think the best way is by experience and and by trying different things and sometimes that's saying yes to something and figuring it out. Um mm-hmm. You know, my second wedding was a destination wedding at Nizuk in Cancun, Mexico, a beautiful resort. And I had never traveled internationally except for when I was a baby. And I had to like rush order a passport to to get there. So I had to figure out what, you know, what it takes to go to another country. And and it was just me. I didn't have a second shooter. And, and you know, just that experience is what teaches you so much. Um, and there's so many different ways to get that. Um, you know, if, if you're not getting that experience, then then coming up with a way to give you that experience or learning online or paying someone for the time to teach you or second or third shooting with someone um, as well to get that experience, you know, travel. Yeah has become a really, really big part of my business and of my brand. And it takes time to get that system in place. And, and you know, you you don't think through things until you experience it. And you're like, oh, I, I should have done this differently or I need this for next time. So I just think yeah. experience, experience is invaluable. Yeah, I love that. And I've seen it, you know, as we've interviewed different people on this podcast, uh, I think that the the facade that is out there is that like, well, the people at the top just kind of all have it together and have always had it together. Um, mm-hmm. But the more that I unpack with people, it's just like, this is a common theme where it's like, I said yes to something that I knew I could figure out or learn or get that experience when the stakes weren't so super high. You know, I'm sure mm-hmm. your wedding in Mexico, they weren't charging, you know, you weren't charging an arm mm-hmm. and a leg. They probably covered your travel and a little bit more, yeah. but exactly. it gave you the ability to get experience. And there's nothing wrong with taking your time, getting experience, learning and growing. And honestly, like you, you've been in business for six years and, you know, I know it, that you're one of the top paid wedding filmmakers on the planet now. And like, that's a short amount of time in six years to go Mm -hmm. from, you know, enough money to license the music to being one of the most sought after highly, you know, paid people on the planet doing this. And so, like, if you're walking through this journey, um, you start doing a few weddings. How did you go from where you're at uh, at the beginning to now being able to to charge the rates that you were you were doing? Like, what what were the stepping stones? Was there one wedding? Was it slow? Like, but what was kind of that process of okay, I could make this into a career. Now I'm going to start raising my prices or like any of that side of the story. Yeah, I think. There's no one particular wedding. It's every single wedding and it's every single project. Um, and it's taking what you learn from that wedding, applying it to the next, and also evaluating what can be done differently and can be done better every single time over and over for for years. and and, you know, i'm I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed that six years is a, a relatively short amount of time, but I would just look at each year. And of my long-term goals and think, well, what can I do this year to get me to a better position next year? And who do I want to work with? Who do I want to make a connection with? How can I do that that's authentic? And and also just following what excited me. I never, you know, had a vision of success that was someone else's at the time when I was living at home with my parents. I mean, that was emotionally difficult for me just to see my other friends in steady jobs, moving up at their jobs, living on their own, you know, it it was completely different for me. Um, And I've always been a very success driven person. So I think I had to just accept that discomfort of I'm not really where I want to be right now in in terms of some some areas and just had to accept that. and push through that and push through that discomfort and and trust myself enough that I had a vision for for my life and a nine to five job was not for me. <laughs> so doing this was was what I wanted to do and I had to make a, 
work. Um, I also, you know, it, it was all on me. I'm, I'm not married. I'm not, you know, I don't get money from my parents. So it was like anything that I want financially, I'm going to be the one to provide that for myself. And that was a huge motivator. So I think just year by year, doing doing what you can and and doing the best that you can and as you're in more demand if if you're booking too much and things are getting you know <laughs> too difficult to to manage from a time management position you have to be continually raising your prices um mm-hmm. there was um a moment in the last year and a half that really transformed my business to from kind of the slow growth steady, you know, growth um, that I was experiencing to being able to double and then double again my pricing and, you know, the kind of projects that I'm able to take on and the kind of work that I'm able to produce. Um, In 2020, during the pandemic, kind of right before that, um, I had gone to a girls Montana trip hosted by a wonderful planner and and it was in Montana. can't remember where exactly, but it was beautiful. And there were some really wonderful women there, um, mostly all photographers, some editors of different magazines and um, being in the room with women who had made names for themselves in this industry and, you know, were like-minded was really, really powerful. And I connected with a a planner there who was similar in, in my age, a little bit younger than me, Amanda Slater of Slater Events. And we connected. We really hit it off. We were in similar stages of of our life, and and she said, you know, I have a a project that I want to shoot at Amangani in Jackson Hole, and I'm going to shoot it with Katie Mary. Katie said yes, and I would love for you to come and film it. And so I said, amazing. Awesome. I love Katie's work. I would love to do that, and you know, left feeling super excited. So then pandemic hits, it gets kind of pushed back, but then, then we plan to do it in 2020. And, um, Amanda texts me, we finalized dates and she's like, Hey, you know, Katie's looking at different cinematographer options. Can you send over some examples? And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I thought Amanda was choosing who was doing this project. And I, I had it in the bag and, um, this was a collaborative editorial project, you know, where we weren't getting paid and, and we were traveling together. But um, I sent over some work and and she said, OK, like, KT likes your work. We, we can do it. I'm like, OK, like KT is a hard sell, obviously. So like going into it, I, I, I realized that. Um, and then KT reached out to me maybe a week be- beforehand and she said, hey, while we're here, would you be able to do some behind the scenes content for me and and my educational content? She has a, a wonderful program for photographers called the Abundance Plan. And I said, yeah, I can totally do that. Like, what do you want? And 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 she said, I don't really know. Like, we want to take people behind the scenes and like teach them stuff and show them what it's like to to shoot an, an editorial campaign. And I said, okay. And I had never shot anything like this. I didn't know how I was going to record audio. I've never edited, you know, a 30-minute behind-the-scenes <laughs> uh, docu-style project. But I researched and I had a plan and I, I went into it. And, you know, she paid me for for that part of the project. And when I got home, I mean, the minute I got home, I edited that I think it ended up being like, it was a three-part series, probably 30, 40 minutes in total. And I spent every waking moment working on that project um, to really just impress KT and see what she could do with behind the scenes video content that she'd never done before. And to this day, it's still one of the things I'm I'm most proud of. You'll never see it unless you're in the Abundance Plan, mm-hmm. um, which is a great program. But it just was something that I hadn't done before. And, and it really kind of ignited that passion again of like pushing myself and pushing myself out of my comfort zone and, and trying something new and figuring something out. Um, and KT loved it. Um, since then, we've been able to film behind the scenes as well as weddings and editorial projects in Italy and Colombia and Napa 
several other places at Amangiri and Utah, and that relationship with Katie has been invaluable. She is mm-hmm. the most thoughtful. I mean, just her work ethic is unlike anything I've ever experienced. And to have that kind of access and that friendship with a woman who is at the absolute top of our industry doing work that is just unbelievable and working so incredibly hard was hugely influential. Um, So that single-handedly was the biggest change in my business from 2019, 2020 to where it is now. Um, she, you know, really lives by her values. She promotes like the environment and, and animal rights and supporting women. And she lives by those values, every single one of them. And she understands that there is a, a huge gap, just like in the film world and the wedding film world, there's a, a huge gap of, of women cinematographers. And she supported that and, and she helped me meet different people and, and introduced me to her clients. And that's been really incredible and an and amazing blessing. Nick and I have to tell you about one of our favorite places to upload our wedding films, and that is Love Stories TV. Love Stories TV is one of the best free resources for us wedding filmmakers. The best part is they are bringing the couples to us. All we have to do is upload our films and we are good to go. Upload unlimited wedding films to your completely free business page. Setup is easy and your films can be live in just minutes. Now is the perfect time to start uploading to Love Stories TV, so head on over to How to filmweddings.com slash love stories tv to check out all of the details and see how love stories tv is giving away ten thousand dollars in cash to wedding filmmakers just like you that's how to filmweddings.com slash love stories tv to start uploading and connecting with the right couples today One question that we see wedding filmmakers asking, what is the best site for licensing music? We have one answer, Musicbed. I have been exclusively using Musicbed since 2016 and our films are better because of it. I have been told during consultations that couples love our films because they feel raw, authentic, and that the music wasn't cheesy. Musicbed has a roster of incredibly talented musicians, bands, and composers who pour their hearts into their work and you can hear the difference. Find the perfect song with Musicbed's intuitive search features like genre, mood, beats per minute, and key, which is probably my favorite of the search perimeters. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed to do what I did and take your wedding films to the next level. Use promo code HTFW22 at checkout to receive one month free with the purchase of any annual subscription. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. I love all of that. I mean, the the thread of just you taking those risks, saying yes to those things, you know, even investing into the trip to Montana or, um, you know, I, I've seen this time and time again with people that are seeing the success. They, maybe they swung a lot of times on a lot of different things, but they hit the ball on one of them really well. They, you know, and like the, the connections and the, you know, people are always like, how can you raise your prices? How can you, um, you know, like it's about the connections with people that you're making and sometimes like in an, you said it like in an authentic way um where you're a real person you connect with KT on multiple levels and it just really works and now it's like oh you've made that connection and you've done these editorials and you know I saw that you just did one uh, or did, you know did work with Jose Villa and uh you know those kinds of connections then you're working with them on wedding days and it's like well I you know I love working with Peyton I would want to you know you're connecting with those wedding planners at those events and like it spirals upward. And you say, you know, I doubled my prices. Then I doubled those. Then I doubled those, um, at the, the, the market that you're in, uh, you know, the dollar amount isn't necessarily the, the key factor. It's the relationship that you've built with people and the trust that this wedding planner knows you're the right fit for that kind of, um, you know, client or that you're going to work really well with that photographer and making those relationships has been the thing, but it wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have, you know, said yes to something like doing that behind the scenes uh, editorial for KT or um, little things like that. The, and that's the same thing, you know, in my story, saying yes to certain things, learning, growing, and knowing and and being like strategic in the opportunities that are being given to you. Um, one of my main mentors before getting into wedding films um, an owner of a business. I worked for that business just because I wanted to be around this guy. Yeah. 
like he had grown something so great. And I just, I took a really low paying job for several years, just being in a meeting with him, learning, growing, and like the kindness that he brought and like behind the scenes, seeing that and the connections that were made is what ended up ultimately launching my wedding filmmaking career. And I was trusted by him and then referrals started coming and then it just started, uh, you know, snowballing and cycling upward. Um, so it's like really cool too. And like, like you've said several times, just like this industry doesn't, in my mind, uh, you know, women in this industry, it's still like, um, a male dominated and, and it's crazy to me that like, and I'm seeing more and more people in our mastermind group or more and more people in our courses, females just kicking butt, taking names. I'm all for it. Um, just the storytelling ability, just natural ability, um, females just to like knock it out of the park. And I'm just, it makes me so pumped that the industry is being elevated by women. And uh, maybe talk a little bit about that, like the importance for you um, and your brand you're building, like just the importance of being a female filmmaker, what we would say to the females out there that are listening to this that might be like, uh, I don't understand this little thing, or I feel like the, I'm not part of the boys club or whatever it is. What would you say to the females out there? Yeah, I would say that find community of, of women and of men who are in aligned with your values and of your goals. And, you know, I, you hear all the time that relationships are so important in business. And for a while to me, that kind of made me feel like, oh, well, it's who you're best friends with. Like it's who you're friends with and who likes you because you're fun. And uh, honestly, I'm an introvert. That's not really my personality. And I think over the past few years, I've learned to really understand that it isn't about being friends. It's about your professional working relationship. It's about adding value to other people in a professional way. And of course, it's beautiful when friendships come out of that and you get to work with wonderful people. But having a professional supportive community, I think that's what it's about. It's adding value to each other. And when you can find other people who support you and, and believe in you and are like-minded professionals, that's so very invaluable. I love that. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit to your work. Um, your work is beautiful. Um, it's you. stunning. You like, you present like films that are, um, top of the line. Like they, there's, there's no doubt that you're very skilled in what you do. You know, your cameras now, you know, your audio, you know, um, and then also just your branding in general, it just oozes expensive. Uh, you know, every bit well, of it is just I'm like, glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And that's, you know, I just went through a rebrand myself and people are telling me about, you know, it's like, I want, you know, to do the same, you know, when it comes to the, the kind of clients that I'm trying to reach the luxurious, the, the, the mindset of these people, you know, like wanting something exclusive and, um, but like being, uh, you, getting yourself to that position, I'm sure your website wasn't always, um, you, you know, what it is today or your, your films, um, on the whole side of just branding, the way your films look, the creativity, um, to get to a more like what things did you, you started doing these films, you started growing, when did you uh, like really start to see a change um, in like not only how much you were you were making from these films, but like what things did you notice that you needed to change? How did you change them to speak to a higher market? Yeah, I I had hired um, a designer to um, work with me on my branding. Um, unfortunately, but also fortunately at that time, I got really, really busy um, in 2020 and 2021 with wedding work. So we never finished my website. Um, we never finished a lot of things because I couldn't, I wasn't making the time to sit down and do it because I was so focused on the work that I was doing. So I, you know, I have a local logo. It's simple. I learned, you know, from my graphic design program I took after college keep things simple. And I think that is the best advice. People are not hiring me because I have a cool website. I don't have a website. If you go to my URL, which currently doesn't even match my email address because that one never has not yet launched. Um, hopefully it will later this year, but, um, my website is a 60 second reel and it's a contact form. 
that is all that is on there. Um, I will send links to my portfolio once someone inquires, but um, it's not a website. <laughs> it's yeah, <laughs> barely a landing page. <laughs> I'm over like, so um, when I'm looking at like even just the way, uh, when I say branding and all mm-hmm. that, like um, to me, I agreed. I agree. Like w- with the website, with whatever it is, but like whenever people do see your work and your portfolio and the way that you've, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people think your branding is just your logo or just your website, yeah. but like your overall brand. Exactly. Um, what did you, I guess the question, what did you kind of really lean into? Yes, simplicity, but like what mm-hmm. was the key factor to you to be like, well, if I'm going to charge this much or if I'm going to be yeah. uh, this like in my films, how am I going to brand these? How am I going to yeah. produce these? How am I going to like that sort of thing? Yeah. Well, I knew that, you know, working with certain planners, certain photographers doing you know, more luxury destination events was long-term my vision. It was something that excited me. It was the type of, you know, imagery and and storytelling that I enjoyed. So I just stayed focused on that. And and when you have a vision, whatever that is, and I don't think filming destination weddings is for everybody, it probably won't be for me forever. It wasn't in 2019 because I had personal things going on where I really needed to stay home. So I didn't travel probably not at all in 2019. Um, but then, you know, I, I was ready to do that again. And I'm in a stage of life where I, I want to travel. Um, I want to, you know, I can commit to being somewhere for a week. Um, that fits my lifestyle and, and what excites me right now. So I do just want to preface to say like, your branding should start with your vision and your lifestyle, and that can change with seasons. So for me, it's it's having a focus of sharing things that are in line with what that client or what that planner or photographer who's recommending you is going to want to see. They're going to want to see events that are similar or value certain things or are in a destination. Um, I love filming details and a beautiful reception room and, you know, bridal fashion. So I showcase those things. Mm -hmm. Um, On my Instagram, I very rarely share anything that's audio story driven. Um, I don't share on a weekly, sometimes not even on a monthly basis. And I think just taking any of that pressure off of yourself is really freeing um and then just just working in a way that's in line with your goals if if you know that you need to shoot 50 local weddings in a year then your goals are going to change or your branding is going to change from wanting to shoot you know 12 to 15 destination weddings Mm -hmm. um so for me it's just always keeping that in mind and keeping keeping to sharing only those things that excite me and that I'd like to share more of or like to shoot more of. And I'm behind. There's so much that I have to share that, that I absolutely love and adore. So it doesn't always get posted or posted immediately, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just keeping that long-term vision or that vision for this season of your life in, in mind when you're putting anything out there. Yeah. I love that. And I love like every time I turn on one of your films, like I know it's you, uh, the vibe of the film, just the, you know, the art background makes a ton of sense. And you are showcasing um, a, the brand, like your brand in these films. Um, the way that they come across is a very, um, a little bit even mysterious, like who's Peyton? What is she doing? Like, where's she? Oh my goodness. She's in Italy. Oh my goodness. She's in like, but you're very strategic in like, keeping it a little bit of um like you know you're not like i think a lot of times people it's like put your face in front of this and mm-hmm. do like be you know dancing and doing a reel and doing it and it's just like that's not exciting to you don't do it mm-hmm. uh you know yeah. and you're not seeing me do that as well and like i'm very uh you know i'm a very story driven emotional driven whatever so it's like on my feed you're going to see father seeing daughter exactly. you know first look and this mm-hmm. and like so but like I know that it's just different for every single person. I love though seeing that in six years time, you've, you know, if you're, if you're looking at the, you know, the progress of, Oh, my camera has video mode to I'm filming weddings for the biggest planners and the, you know, celebrities and different things or whatever and NDAs and all these things. Um, It's really uh, incredible to like, think if you really lean into um, this craft, what, what can be done. Um, 
And so I would love to kind of hear from you, like, I kind of asked it a second ago, but I want to dive just a tiny bit deeper into like, you started with a film class or photo class, you did some weddings, you learned um, some things, but like what physical things, like tangible things, did you really, did you purchase courses? Did you hire mentors? Like, where did you, um, you know, where did you find it? Where'd you find, did you know that this is where you were going at the beginning? Uh, is, was this the, the goal all along? When did you start to realize, I think I'm good enough to do these weddings or what, like, Ooh, if I need to do, if I'm going to do this wedding, I need to get better at this or whatever. Like what was yeah. kind of some of that story? I think just part of my approach to anything that I do, whether it was being a student in college or being in a sorority, it's like, I'm want to be the best at that. And I want to get the most out of that. And see what I can do with that. And and those are the kinds of things that excite me. There's a really wonderful program that I did so many times in college. It's called Strengths Finder, I think. And you find out what your top five strengths are. And then the philosophy is to focus on those strengths instead of improving your weaknesses. So from that, I learned that one of my strengths is learning and critical thinking and and all of that. So I'm a learner. Like I get so excited by a challenge. I'm filming a, a bridal collection next month in Los Angeles, and it's going to be my first time where the client is requesting a wireless external monitor so that they can look at the, the dresses while we're filming. And I'm so excited that's to cool. do that because it's something that I haven't done before. So I'm b- bringing a digital tech and I'm bringing my own lighting team, which I haven't gotten to do on on other commercial editorial projects that I've done. So it's like stuff like that. It's like that's what I just can't stop thinking about, you know, mm-hmm. when when I get those opportunities. So for me, it was just seeking out those resources in the past year and a half. Um, my partner, who I met him at, the music bed conference <laughs> um of all Love places that. a few years ago <laughs> yeah yeah um um he is a commercial and narrative uh director writer and editor so i've you know learned so much from his experience and his approach he has a, a you know formal education in film from scad which is incredible and and to kind of learn his philosophy from things and to just ask those questions like when you ask people questions they're so willing to to talk to you um you know and if they're not pay them for their time but since he is my partner you know he'll he'll give me feedback and and I think getting feedback and and being open to those things are so so valuable I've also been working with some really amazing second shooters over the past year and a half as I do destination work and have to build out my team. I also have um, a few assistant editors that I work with to make my workflow as easy as possible. And kind of my my focus this past year has been nailing in my process and making things to where I'm kind of only doing the things that I can do. So I'm not sinking footage i'm not doing a ceremony doc edit like things like that that you can train someone else to to do and Mm -hmm. it's not an overnight solution (laughs) when i started working with my assistant editor i thought oh my life's gonna be so much better but it's often more work for a, a while sometimes a very long time before it pays off um so i think that if that is something that you want in, in your future to to start working on that now because it is a process i mm. was able to hire my mom full time last year as my kind of personal assistant she'll do everything from charging my batteries to cleaning out my camera bags and cleaning my lenses and gear and getting things ready when I travel and when I come back doing my laundry and getting me repacked for for my next trip things like that that you can't do it alone and and building a team and finding the areas where you know you you aren't your strongest at or that someone else could do for you I think that that's a really key in in growth and and definitely like at the beginning, I felt too proud to let anyone do anything for me or or to help me or 
to edit or coal or, you know, even just a ceremony doc. It's like, now that I do it, it's like, well, why did I think that I was the only one who could do that, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? And, and for commercial work, I hire, you know, my partner, Travis, to, to edit some things when he's available because he's an incredible editor and, and some of the behind the scenes for KT Mary that we're continuing to do. And, and, you know, to be able to have those creative conversations and, and, to learn that skill of talking about your vision as a creative director has been really exciting and, and, and really amazing. But I think it's just that approach of like following what you're excited about mm-hmm. and learning, you know, however you can, however that is. And I think that looks a little bit different um, for everyone. Uh, I love it. I love hearing all of it. I'm so motivated when it comes to people just getting out there and like, going for it, leaning into what they love doing. Um, I like to ask this, just what are you excited about moving forward? Like what, what's going, yeah. what's coming up in the future for you? What are you excited about? Where are you going to shoot? Um, what are some things that, that you're excited about? Yeah, I have a lot of things I'm excited about this year. Um, it's not as busy as last year with the 2021 weddings plus the 2022 postponed weddings. So I have a lot more space to to breathe. And part of raising prices is just about that. And it's about necessity. And it's about, well, if I want to deliver this standard of work every time and, and something I love doing is creating a, a next day or next week edit and I cannot give that time and emotional energy and sleepless nights to every single event. So it was out of necessity to to raise prices. But um, I'm I'm excited to have more time and energy to put that in there, but also put time into my personal life and see friends again because last year it was it was all work and it was all all growth and it was all my putting everything into my business Mm -hmm. and this year I'm excited to have more space and more time to have balance but um, I'm going to Avignon France in June with Easton events for a wedding that I'm very very excited about I have a just a two-person bride and groom only elopement in Ravello Italy Mm. Mm. Um, the bride is just stunningly gorgeous and wearing an incredible custom gown um And that that bridal collection that I I mentioned to you, um, you know, I filmed collections in the past and and it's exciting and it's fun. But what I'm most excited about that is doing something that I haven't been able to do um, in terms of bringing my own lighting team and Mm -hmm. my digital tech to to try something different. Um, So those are some of the things there's there's more I think I'm going to. Europe three times in total this year and um, some really incredible weddings. Some are NDA'd, so I won't get to share those, but um, some really great stuff from everywhere from California to um, Texas to Florida, everywhere. I love it. I love all of it. Well, we're running low on time, unfortunately, but I would love to kind of hear... Um, where people can find you if they want to get in touch with you. Do you offer, do you have anything for wedding filmmakers? Uh, yeah. Now's your time to kind of throw that out there. Yeah, great. Uh, the best way to keep in touch is just on Instagram. Um, it's just at Peyton Frank. Um, I, you can watch my reel on my website <laughs> or you can <laughs> watch stuff on my, on my Instagram. Um, I do offer some one-on-one mentorships for cinematographers or creatives who want to dive into the specifics of their goals or to talk to me about, um, you know, my approach, um, on anything, um, you can sign up for that. You can just DM me, um, on Instagram or send me an email and I can provide you more information as I have avail- availability on that. But that's something I am definitely kind of exploring and have been exploring the last few months and, and am passionate about finding ways to help other people create a business and a lifestyle that is profitable and fulfilling for them. I love it. Um, last, uh, anything else that we didn't talk about that you want to make sure that you say any final thoughts, uh, for the listeners? I don't think so. I think just, you know, keep following your passion and stay true to yourself. If you want to do dances and post those on TikTok and go viral, do that. But if, if, you know, that's not you. I think just find who you are and what lights you up. And and that's going to look like 
different for everyone. So just becoming more and more you and staying true to that vision. Um, I think that's, that's what success and, and looks like to me. I love it. Well, I really do appreciate the time, Peyton. It's been a long time coming for us. I've been uh, working on getting you on here for a bit and I'm just so excited for your success and just watching the the films that aren't NDA'd that I can see of yours. And, uh, you know, just, we're really excited just that you took the time and just want to say thank you. If you don't follow Peyton, do it. Check out her work. Um, thanks so much for being on, Peyton. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so humbled and by your words and to be here. Well, thank you so much again, Peyton, for being on the podcast today. I'm inspired by your story. I love the art that you bring, the artistic nature to your films. I love that you just have gotten out of your comfort zone and grown to one of the most uh, expensive and luxurious brands in the wedding filmmaking industry. If you haven't already, be sure to head on over to howtofilmweddings.com. Our course will be coming out soon, the Complete Wedding Videography course, and there's links there to grab information, free portions of the course. It's coming soon. There's a lot of good things happening over at howtofilmweddings.com. YouTube videos, templates, all kinds of stuff can be found right there. So be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you. Are you looking for a better way to deliver your wedding films to your couples? Look no further. Our friends over at Wedflow provide the most flexible video delivery solution on the market. Wedflow is pay per project with no large upfront cost or commitment, and you can cancel any time. Not only that, Wedflow offers a premium viewing experience for your couples. Accessible on mobile, tablet, desktop, as well as their very own suite of TV apps. Each project comes with 10 years hosting and an experience for your clients that will blow them away. Stop delivering your films the old fashioned way and give your couples something to rave about. Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow to check out Wedflow today.